Did you decide to start your own, your own business right away or did you go work for a firm for a little bit? Or what so was your entrepreneurship journey like? I've always, I was the one sitting in college at the cafeteria table doing people's taxes. <laughs> That's how I got my, my books, money, right? My um, gas for the car. So I've always, you know, had a way of um, what I call making legal money, hence good money multiplier. Yeah. Where I come from, I just think too many good hearted Men and some women, you know, young, that just got caught up in the wrong things, trying to make a quick dollar. Yes. And I'm like, oh, there's too many ways for us to make good money. And so, um, so yeah, so that was just me. I mean, I, if I knew I needed something and, and the traditional financing or the traditional avenues just were not always allotted or available right um to me and in my community so i just had to be creative with it Ooh, yeah. and they created a <laughs> <laughs> something special right so yeah so when you were helping people out in your in college like you're helping mm -hmm. people doing doing taxes you know you're making yourself available you're finding your first few clients and then after <laughs> college you went out and you started just growing that business? I went into corporate America, and I'm mm -hmm. so glad I did. I went into corporate America. I started working for a bank, one of our local, biggest local banks in South Bend, where I'm from, South Bend, Indiana. And that was a phenomenal experience. So I found out, didn't even know this existed, but they were, I was just interviewing. Couldn't find anything that, like, really fit me. And that, I was doing part-time, you know, taxes on the side in the county, but nothing real sustainable, right? And um, I got these babies I got to provide for. Yeah. And so I just, the bank had a, what's called a management, a corporate management position, right? Where you literally go through and train it between 18 and 21 departments. I didn't know a bank had 18 or 21 departments, <laughs> right? But, oh my goodness, that was a game changer. That's where I learned so much of what I'm sharing now. So I literally learned how to manage 18 different departments in the bank. So you're talking about financial credit, um, building uh, investments, mm -hmm. trust, corporate. It was a phenomenal experience. Yeah. And, and I saw it in all of it. All of it made sense because I understood the numbers. I mean, if when you understand numbers and finances, it just... The world makes sense yeah. in a whole different way, yeah. right? So, um, so that was an amazing experience. I settled in um, in retail because I was good at sales. So every month I was a number one sales producer Boom. in the branch. Every month, Let's every year, or in the bank system. And um, but after a while, it was just I felt like. I wasn't really living up to my potential, right? I yeah. felt like I was so stagnated in whatever it was. I remember I got written up, I got written up and could not get my raise. I told you I got two children at home. I'm raising, yeah. right? And I'm a branch manager. And my boss said that she had, my supervisor at the time said she had, um, I couldn't get my raise because she heard me talking slang to one of, I'm telling you, slang is what she used. Talking slang to one of the clients, the uh, customers that I was serving. I said, okay. I mean, so this was like probably nine months ago for my, my annual review was this next, you know, year. And so she reminded me who I was talking about. I said, you talking about the young couple? That was the first time they had a bank account, right? I opened that for them. They came back. They needed a loan. So I gave them a loan. First time they ever had a loan. So I had to speak to them in their language to know you have to pay this on time. The importance of credit. And talking to them in corporate terms, it would have been over their head. Yeah. I'm speaking their language. And I said, you going to refuse me my raise? Mm. I said, but I need you to do me one favor. I made her pull them up. On a, I need you to look and tell me if they have defaulted in their loan, which a lot of hers was defaulting at the time. Uh -huh. Or are they paying on time? They made every single payment. So I'm speaking to them so they could understand the importance of this. Wow. You call it slang, I'm speaking their language. Yeah. And, uh, and at the time, I'm bringing million-dollar clients into the bank, and I just started realizing my worth mm -hmm. and that um, I think I could do this better. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? That kind of thing. So I just couldn't. Every time, you know, I was, it was ready to grow, it was always something. Mm -hmm. So I started part-time and haven't looked back. Yeah. Having looked back, that second month I was in business, and I think I wrote this down. Sometimes I even think about it, I tear up because I was so scared. I mean, it was like, this has to work. 
my entire family was like, you're leaving that corporate good job to start your own business? But I knew, I mean, there was just something in me. I knew I was supposed to be doing this. I didn't have it all figured out, but I had enough figured out to know that I can do this yeah. and I can provide for my family. And when I tell you that second month in business full time, I made more money in that month than I did all year at the bank. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hell yeah. And Love ever it. since then. So, oh my goodness. <laughs> so that was a real, real like, okay, I can do this, right? Yeah. And just a benefit to know that when you know your worth, you know your worth. Yeah. Right? And it's important that you, and again, I was doing what I love. I was serving people, right? Yes. I was teaching people about their finances. So it's it's been phenomenal. Yeah. Rewind back to right before you quit that job. Mm-hmm. Did you, what was that moment like when you took that leap into entrepreneurship for Ooh, yourself? It was frightening. I mean, it really, I mean, shaky frightening because I knew that it was something I needed to be doing. I knew it. I knew it. I mean, I just felt, I knew everything in me. But at the same time, nobody, nobody in my world was like, oh, you should do this. Nobody. My mom, my, I mean, because, again, I'm the first graduate from college in my family. Wow. Um, and then also the first one to have what they call, like, this good corporate job. Yeah. Which it really was. So it really, really was a good opportunity on so many levels. But it wasn't what I knew I should be doing at that time. And um, so it was... So even now, so when I'm working with entrepreneurs in the Good Money Multiplier program, I understand that fear, right? But now I also know how to lay out and show them, if you do not do this, this is you're going to be in the same place, right? And I do look at individuals who are still at that bank, still doing the same things. They look so miserable yeah. sometimes, right? And because they wouldn't take a leap of faith. Because there was a few of them I tried to take with me. <laughs> I'm like, look, we can work really hard. Because at first I started off just focusing on taxes with a small hand of accountants, counting clients. I said, we can work really hard six months out the year. And then we got the rest of the six months to enjoy life, yeah. right? And so some of them said, nah, just, they were too, they were comfortable, right? They were comfortable, and I get that, you know, but well, I wanted to do something different. Yeah. How important was it when you left to make it? Like, how dire was your situation? Oh, failure was not an option. And that has been my motto, I think, I feel like sometimes my entire life. Failure is just not an option. So what do I have to do to make sure this works, right? And um, being a mother at 16 years old, again, I was the athlete that had scholarships coming in, and all of a sudden there was this disappointment. Like, you know, I didn't expect broken promises, but now I'm a young woman looking at a broken promise and then trying to figure out, okay, well, how do I maneuver this? Failure was not an option. I was going to be a good mother. So that means that I didn't sleep. Right, because I had college full time. I had these children when I get off, and I had a third shift job. I don't even remember sleeping um, so many um, times in my life, but I was able to keep going. Right, I'm sure I got some sleep in there, but you see what I mean? Failure was not an option. Um, and back in those days, I mean, it was so taboo to be a single mom, right? And um, but I still knew I got these beautiful children, beautiful children. I'm still a beautiful young woman. Yes. So, again, failure was not an option. So that meant that I had to um, get used to what I call real money matters early in life, right? So I had to learn how to budget. I had to learn how to organize. I had to learn how to set up systems, right? So the kids got picked up on time, and I could get to work. On I mean, so all those things started young, but they're why really right now them same skills. That's why I tell people don't. I don't know why we go through things in life, right? It just happens. Yeah. But don't fret over it. Just make the best out of it. And those lessons, those lessons as a young college student, 19 years old, is the one thing I put in place now that helped me, for one, become a first-generation millionaire. Yes. <laughs> and teaching others how to be first-generation millionaires, too. Those same things. So, yeah. Yeah. 